Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created Phaser 3. If you missed the previous videos, there will be links in the video description to the source code up to this point, as well as the complete source code for this video. There will also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up. So let's get started. Alright, so now we have a new private method for updating the width of our health bar. And this works great when we create an instance of our health bar but this isn't going to help us if we need to update it dynamically. And so with the private method, this will be useful for when a battle first starts. If you imagine, sometimes our monsters might already be damaged and we need to update our health value uh, at the start of the battle. We wouldn't want that to be actually animated. We just want the battle to start with it at that particular percentage. So if I was at half health, I would start with half a bar. Versus in battle, if I take damage, we're going to animate the health bar when that damage happens and then slide the bar down to show that we just took damage so to do that we're going to add a new public method and so what we'll do is we're just going to add a public method we're going to call it set meter percentage and we're just going to call it animated and so when we do this we're going to need a percent value uh, for this we're going to expect a value we're not going to have a default value um, since we're taking damage um, this would also work if we heal so if we like use a, a potion or something to heal our monster we could animate and increase our health as well so then we're also going to expect some options and so for our options what we're going to allow us to do is First, we're going to specify a duration of our animation, so how long we want this to happen, and we'll make that optional with a default value. Also, if we're going to provide a callback, so then that way when the animation's done, uh, we could notify the code that invoked this method um, if we need to provide any type of callback so we can do something once we're done animating. All right, so then in our method, what we'll do is we're going to need to calculate our width again. Uh, so we'll do this. Then we're going to go ahead and use a phaser three uh, tween to go ahead and do our animation. So to do that, we're going to do this scene and then we'll do tweens to reference our tween manager. And then for our tweens, we're going to add a new tween. All right. And so for our tween, uh, what we're going to do is let's add our target and we're going to target our middle uh, game object. Next, we're going to target our display width property and we'll set that equal to our width that we've just calculated and then for our duration uh, we're going to use our config dot duration if it's provided or we'll use a fallback of 1000 milliseconds or one second and for our ease function what we'll do is we're going to use phaser dot math dot easing we'll use sign and then out and then we'll, we'll use on update, and this allows us to provide a callback for every time there's an update call uh, to our tween. And uh, so we'll use this to update our right caps x value. So we're just going to copy this line here. We'll paste this here. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to add some logic. We're going to say is visible. And we'll set that equal to this middle dot display width is greater than zero. And so we're just going to get this all coded out and we'll come back and explain what's going on. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll do our left cap dot visible. We'll set that equal to is visible. We're going to copy this and then apply that to our middle and our right cap. So we'll have our middle. We'll have our right cap. And then finally, we'll do on complete. And what we'll do is we're going to reference our options. And since it's optional, we're going to do our callback. And then likewise up here, this isn't config, that should be options. And we'll make that optional. All right, uh, so what we're doing here is we are using Phaser 3's tween manager to create a new tween. And at its core, basically a tween is a way for you to manipulate properties on one of your game objects and you can update that property to uh, any value 
And what's really cool about the tween is it allows you to provide an easing function to manipulate that value over a set period of time. Uh, so it's a way for us to create these animations and create smooth animations by using the built-in functionality of Phaser 3. Uh, so if you're not familiar, uh, basically easing functions, uh, they allow you to move objects because typically objects in real life, they don't just start and stop. Um, usually we have like physics and so it'll be a force. And so oftentimes objects could start slow, speed up, then slow down when they get to the end. Uh, there could be where it starts off slow and gets going really fast. Um, maybe it starts off fast and then slows down as it comes to the end. And there's, there's many different ways you could use, uh, math and easing functions to generate a different type of animation. So a really great website here is uh, easings.net. It has some really good examples of different easing functions and what the animation will look like. There'll be a link to this in the description of the video, uh, but it's a great visualizer tool to see what different types of animations will happen based on your easing function. Uh, so as an example in our code, we referenced our sign out uh, for our easing. So if we do our easing, we have our out sign. You'll see here it's a smooth transition, a little bit of a speed up and then slows down again. Uh, versus if we want to do something different, like maybe like this ease back in, it could go slow, fast, and then really fast. Um, there's just a lot you can do. And how the tween works is it will apply this function, this easing function to update your property. And so in our code, how that works is first you have to specify your target. And so this is your game object that you want to update. So we're referencing our middle image game object. And then you have to provide one or more properties you want to update. And so we're using our display width. And so our display width is now going to change over a period of time. And that time is based on our duration. Uh, so this is how long that animation is going to happen for. Um, so we're going to default to one second if we don't provide a value. And so this could be a longer animation if we did something like three seconds. And then so for your ease, this is where you can specify your function, the easing function or a string if you're using one of Phaser's built-in ones of the ease animation we want to apply. And so where you're going to use the sign out for this. And then on update, it allows you to provide a callback so you can make changes um, every time there is a tick, an update call to this method. And so this is how we're going to actually update um, another object because what will happen is phaser is automatically going to update our display with property on our middle game object. But because our right game object is dependent on where our middle game object is placed in the display with, we need to update this at the same time. And so that's why we're using these on update callback here is so that way we can update both objects at the same time and then they move together in our animation. Um, and so once we show this, it'll, it'll make more sense. Um, the last piece of logic we're doing the update is we're just seeing if we should display our health bar. Uh, so as an example, if our health bar is set to zero, um, we would just make this no longer visible. Um, we would just hide all of our game objects or if somehow a negative value got calculated. Uh, we would also hide it. So then that way we're not doing anything funky with the health bar. We only want to be visible um, if our width is greater than zero. Um, then finally on complete, this allows you to provide a callback that you want to be invoked when the tween is completed. So once our duration is fully done, we've set our property to the value we specified, it will call this callback. Um, and so what will happen is during this tween on each update, we're going to have our starting value. So based on the game object and the current display width value, it's now going to update that every tick of our game loop until finally it gets to the final value we want it to be. Um, so ideally this would be different than the value is currently at, so we could see that animation. Uh, so that was a lot of details. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and test out our animation and that way we can see what actually happens. Uh, so if we come back to our game, all right, and so what we'll do is we'll come back to our health bar and after we go ahead and in our constructor, let's go ahead and call our new method. Uh, so we're going to do this set meter percentage animated, and let's go ahead and set this to, you know, 50%. So then what we'll see right away, and we'll go ahead and refresh is 
after we create our instance, we see our health bar is now animated and over that one second duration, it goes ahead and updates that display value. So if I changed and added in our options, and let's say if I added in my duration, and I do, let's say four seconds, just something really long. You'll see now it's a different type of animation because it takes, it takes longer, um, but it's still using that same easing function to create that. All right, and just to see a different example, what we'll do is we're just gonna update this to be 1,500 milliseconds, so one and a half seconds. And instead of doing the sign out, let's go ahead and we will do a really drastic one. Let's do this ease out elastic. So you'll see the animations be very jumpy. So if we change this to elastic, if we come back to our site, you'll see now we have a completely different animation and it's very bouncy. Uh, so definitely not something we want for our health bar, but just a good example of how you can use some of the different ease functions to create different types of animations. Um, so like I said, all of these are built into phaser, so you don't have to code these yourselves. You can just go ahead and use them. Uh, so let's go ahead and change this back to sign out, and then that way we have our smooth animation. All right, so for example, what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and get this out of our constructor. We're gonna come back to our battle scene, and we'll make our code bigger, and let's go ahead and change how we're creating our health bar instance. Uh, so instead, what we'll do is we'll do const player health bar, and we'll set that equal to our new health bar instance, and then we will go ahead and just pass that in but actually we don't want our container, we want the actual class, and then we'll go ahead and pass in our player health bar container. Likewise, let's do the same for our enemy monster. So we'll have our enemy health bar, and we'll pass in our enemy health bar container. So then what we can do is at the bottom of our create method, uh, we can go ahead and reference our player health bar as an example. We'll do set meter percentage, Let's do 0 0.5 and we will do a duration of 3000 milliseconds, so three seconds. And let's add a callback and just to make sure our callback works. And we're gonna do console.log and we'll do animation completed. All right, so what should happen is after our health bar is done animating, we get our callback. All right, so one last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna update our health bar um, to have like a shadow. So right now in our health bar updates, uh, we can't really tell that we're at 50%. All we see is our bar is smaller than our enemy's bar. Uh, instead, we're gonna add like a shadow um, to the background and then that way as we update our main health bar here, we'll see uh, that background image. Uh, so to do that, we're going to use some more um, assets from our Kenny's Assets, the UI Space expansion. Um, there's going to be some images called the Shadow Caps, and they're meant to be used for this. Uh, so on the GitHub repo, uh, in the Assets uh, release, uh, there is going to be this Health Bar Components.zip folder. There will also be a direct link to this download uh, in the description of this video. Uh, but if you can go ahead and download that Health Bar component, zip folder. And if you can go ahead and extract the contents, there should be three new images in there. Uh, so in the uh, folder, uh, there will be this bar, horizontal shadow left, mid, and right. And so these will be our shadow image game objects. Uh, so once we have those, we just need to add those to our game uh, like we did with our other assets. So let's go ahead and jump over to our assets, asset keys file. And then what we need to do is we just need to go ahead and add in our uh, asset keys. Uh, so we're just gonna copy these. And so we'll have our left cap and just we'll add a suffix of shadow. And what we'll do is we'll just copy this. And so we'll have our right cap shadow. We'll have our middle shadow. And then let's go ahead and update these. And let's go ahead and just uh, rearrange these real quick. All right, so now that we have our new asset keys, let's jump over to our preloader scene and we'll go to where we create our health bar assets. All right, and so what we're gonna do is we'll copy our three image loading lines and we're gonna change this to our right cap shadow. We'll do our middle shadow 
and then our left cap shadow. And then we just need to change our file name uh, so it's not green. It's just going to be shadow. Copy that. We'll update green and then update our green. All right, so now that we have our three new assets loaded, uh, what we'll do is let's jump over back to our health bar and we'll add a new method for creating these uh, shadow images. So we're gonna do create health bar shadow images. We'll need an X and Y value for positioning these. All right, and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create that game objects. So we're gonna do call our new method, we'll provide our X and Y value. Uh, so what we'll do is we're just gonna copy all this logic here and let's go ahead and add our three new properties. So we're gonna need our shadows. Uh, so let's copy this. And so we'll have left cap shadow. We'll have left shadow cap. We'll have middle shadow cap. And let's go ahead and do right shadow cap. And then we'll come down here and we'll just update those references. So instead of left cap, this is going to be left shadow cap. Middle shadow. And actually, let's just, we'll do middle shadow to keep that consistent. Let's get rid of cap. And then we will have our right shadow cap. Let's go ahead and update our references for what we passed to our container. We'll go ahead and save. Oh, and then we need to actually fix our references. So it's no longer left cap. It's going to be left shadow cap. Uh, likewise, for our middle, it's going to be middle shadow. All right, so one last thing we need to do is our shadow. We don't actually have our updated display with. So what we need to do is update that uh, in our create method here. So we'll do our this, our middle shadow game object, and we're going to set our display width. We'll set our display width to this uh, full width. And one quick change is we actually need to go ahead and update our asset names. Uh, so in our create health bar shadow images, let's change this to left cap shadow. And likewise for our middle, we'll have our middle shadow and our right cap shadow. So now if we go ahead and save, uh, we'll go ahead and refresh. You'll see now when we take damage, we have this background image behind our health bar. And now it's very evident to the player how much, how full the health bar actually is. All right, so one last thing we're going to do before we wrap up is we're just going to go ahead and add in some of our missing uh, types uh, using our JS doc. Uh, so what we do is in our health bar class, uh, let's go ahead and go to our create health bar shadow images. And what we'll do is we're going to copy our JS doc from our create health bar images. Let's go ahead and add that to our method. Then we want to go ahead and actually change. So this isn't placing the health bar container uh, it's to place the health bar uh, game object. And what we'll do is we're going to copy that. Let's replace that. Just clean that up a little bit. Let's copy this. And it does the same thing here for our shadow, uh, our regular images. Then what we'll do is we'll come down to our set meter percentage method. So inside here for our param, uh, we're going to expect a number. Uh, so percent is going to be optional. And we're going to go ahead and just give it a default value of one. And then we're just going to add a quick uh, doc. So we're going to say a number between zero and one that is used for setting how filled the health bar is. And then what we're going to do is let's go ahead and come down to our public method. We'll add in our doc type. Let's copy our logic for our percentage because uh, we go ahead and use the same value. And then for options, uh, this is actually going to be an object. So if we want to go ahead and document an object, what we can do is we can use the object type. Um, we do want this to be optional, not required. And then if we want to specify the individual properties on our object, uh, what we can do is we can index into those. So let's go ahead and copy this. And then so on options, uh, we're going to have a the duration. So to reference that we do options dot and then our property name. Uh, so this will be duration. And then we can also provide our default value uh, like we're using. 
And then we're just going to copy this, go ahead and paste that. And then this will be our callback. So this will be a function that returns nothing. Uh, so we'll do options callback. And we'll make it optional, but we're not going to provide a default. All right, so now that we've finished completing our uh, basic health bar component uh, and we added in some uh, new game logic to actually animate it, that actually brings this video to an end. Uh, in our next video, we're going to go ahead and work on creating our monster components for our battle scene. Uh, so we're going to work on taking our player and our enemy monster uh, data out of our battle scene and creating new components for those. I will also start to add in some of the metadata tied to our monsters and the battle. So like adding in the names, the attack, uh, names, the attack damage, health points, uh, current health, things like that. Uh, so as a reminder, there is a link in the description of the video to the complete source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in the series is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please see some of the links on your screen now.